let us come let us adore you kneel down before you kneel down before you in your presence Lord worship worship Because he has been good to us, and now it is our opportunity to be good to him and obedient to scriptures. Amen? Amen. And if you want to read it, it's in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 through 12. For you out in virtual land, you've got your Bibles with you, you can look up Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 through 12, and it talks about the tithing. Where it says, Will a man rob God? Scripture says, Certainly not. Yet you have robbed me. How do you ask in times and in offerings? He says, bring my gifts now into the storehouse and see will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out so much of a blessing that you have room to receive it. He says, try me now in this and see will I not rebu rebuke the devourer for your name's sake that you have not, that the, excuse me, the, the field does not cease to yield you fruit. Amen? So at this time, we want to call up the ushers to do the other. Uh, Thank you. Right now and in 
it's time to go, Lord, to be all. Oh, it is time to go, Lord, to the altar and pray. Oh, Father, standing around the altar. But first of all, my Father, we want to thank you because we have no other God to call on but thee and be alone. We thank you that you brought us to this house of prayer, that we can lift you up in songs and prayer. We pray for each one that's here today, my Father. We pray, my Father, that you would just bless us, Lord. Able us to be able to tell somebody that you died for our sin, my Father. You were buried and you rose again the first day. We thank you this morning. You brought us, my Father. We thank you, my Father. You enabled us, my Father, to have you in our hearts today. We ask you, my Father, if there have been somebody here, my Father, who have not accepted you for their Savior, that they will do it, my Father, today, Lord. Please, sir, have mercy. Thank you for your blessings, my Father. Thank you for Pearly Gate Emmanuel, my Father. They have stood on this corner, my Father. People have come and people have gone, but he's still here, my Father. Thank you for those that are not here today. Thank you that you enabled me, my father, to be in the service this morning. Thank you for those that have prayed for me, my father. Thank you for we pray for the young ones that are here. Thank you that we pray for the preacher that is to speak today. Thank you for your so good to us. You enabled us, my Father, to come even though we might have problems. Please, sir, have mercy. Bless each one that's here. Bless us. Bless our pastor, Lord. We know you know who he is. We ask you just to take care of him in his days. Guide each one of us that's here today. Able us, my Father, to lift you up uh, in songs and prayer and spiritual song. Bless this preacher, my Father, that he may stand and preach your most precious word. Thank you, Reverend the Pope, my Father, who is standing this morning on your word. Bless all that is to take place. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. amen. Say it a little loud. Amen. 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 Praise God. We don't have Sister Cook here, unfortunately, so we got to sing some songs. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. So, uh, if you will, turn with me in the books. We'll do Pass Me Now, Just to Say. No. What number? Something else. I'll take a request. Somebody, please help me. <laughs> I mean, because I'm bringing old songs. I know, I know a lot of old songs. So. Uh, Amen. What page? Page 181. Amen. We're just going to sing a few songs, usher in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, make a joyful noise. It didn't say you have to have a beautiful voice. It said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for it is what? It is good to him. Amen. Amen. So let's make a joyful noise. Let him know that we're joyful and we happy to say to praise his name and just be here together. Amen. 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 Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Do not. 
Um, and I'm grateful to God for my good friend, Pastor Dominic Hampton, who uh, felt like he could lean on my shoulder to be here in his stead on today. Amen. And listen, I want you to give all yourselves a hand on today. Listen, you, you said, Pastor, you can't have one week off, Pastor. You got the whole month off. We don't have to talk about that. Amen. We got to talk about that. Amen. Amen. But I'm, I'm grateful to God that you all uh, have a love and a desire to make sure your pastor has some rest. He's a good man. He's a good pastor, but he's a good man. Amen. That loves the Lord. He loves his family. And he loves God. And he loves this church. Amen. And so I already know. I don't know who he has lined up to come for the month of September. But I already know that he did some praying to make sure he tries to bring you some of God's best. Amen. 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 Um, listen, if you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to ask you to turn to uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. And we're going to look at chapter number 1. Now listen, if you don't know where 1 Samuel is in the Bible, they have the table of contents there where you can find it. If you have your smart device, it's going to be easy. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, in my Bible, Sister Erica, 1 Samuel, first chapter is on page 238. But that's not going to do y'all no good today. Amen. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. Let me put on my extra set of eyes here. Uh, listen, I am a grandfather. I'm not ashamed to say that. Sometimes grandparents do need some help. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm reading from, from 1 Samuel, the first chapter, and we're going to start at verse number 9. It says, Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me. Somebody say, remember me. Remember me. And not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. Verse number 12 says, As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Verse 15 says, Not so, my Lord. Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Right. Verse 16 says, Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Verse 18 says, she said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Listen, family and friends, for the next few moments this morning, I'm going to share on the subject matter of God listens to you. God listens to you. I don't know where all of you are this morning, but one thing I can testify is that I don't know where you are, but God knows exactly where you are. Matter of fact, 
when we laid down last night, put our head on our pillow, and God allowed us to have a good night's sleep, it was not ourselves that kept us, but it was God's grace and God's mercy that watched over us. That's why we came here to Emmanuel Corvette, not to lift ourselves up, but we've come here to lift the name of Jesus. And I want to ask you this morning, I know we're in the city of San Francisco, but have you ever been at a place in life where it seems like that you're dotting the I's and you're crossing the T's and it just seems like that everything is going right, but some things just don't seem in order. It's just like when we turn on our TVs and we listen to KTVU and CNN and MSNBC. We don't really need to listen to them to know that the world is chaotic and that there's a lot of turbulence that's not going right in this world. We know that this world is just like Richard Pryor, stir crazy. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you pray and you pray, but it seems like nothing is happening, nothing is going your way? It seems like your plans have been bust down the toilet. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you pray to God and you say, God, I need you to help me. God, I need you to meet me where I am because I've done all I can do. And I... I've done it my way, but now, God, I'm praying to you because I need you to work it out in my life. Has anybody ever been here before to know that God hears your prayers? Listen, have you been on a job before where your job told you you would get 40 hours a week and then three months later the boss told you some weeks you're going to get 32 hours, some weeks you're going to get 28 hours. Have you ever been at a place in life when family and friends have talked about you, mistreated you, and cut you off? Have you ever been at a place in life where the doctor has told you that he or she has exhausted all the measures and they've done all they can do. Have you ever been at a place in life where you spent four or five or six or seven hundred thousand dollars you bought a house in a good neighborhood, it was peaceful, it was quiet, it was safe, but now everything is going every which way but loose. Have you ever been at a place in life where you are stressed and blessed? Have you ever been at a place in life when your mind is going one way but life is going another? Have you ever been in a place where your emotions are just like Great America, a roller coaster? One minute you're going up and the next minute you're going down. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how big your house is. I don't care what new car you drive. Life will get your attention. You don't have to tell me I didn't come here to get ready. I came here ready on today because, listen, in life you will have some sadness. In life you will have some crying days. In life you will experience loneliness and anger and frustration and disappointment and shame and resentment in love. But somebody knows that God will meet you right where you are. Can I tell you today that emotions don't discriminate. Emotions don't care about your race, your gender, your, your uh, sexual preference, or how much money you got in the bank. Emotions will knock on your door. Truth of the matter, if you live long enough, my friends, emotions will get the best of you. Have you ever been in distress, desperate or depressed? You need help and you need it now because if just one more thing happens, 
If somebody says the wrong thing, if somebody looks at you the wrong way, you just might give them a piece of your mind. And maybe that's not good enough for you. Look, I ain't been in church my whole life, uh, Brother Pastor, but listen, there used to be uh, Grandmaster Flash that had a song that said simply this, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. It's like a chunk of some time that makes me wonder how I keep from going under. And can I get four witnesses and I'll make number five that says life is like a jungle sometimes. And I don't know how I'm going to make it. I've used all my resources. I've, I've went to Google. I've went to Siri. I've got a PhD. I've got a master's degree. But life is still life. Listen, there will be times in life when you find yourself on the edge. Have you ever felt like you are in the middle of, of the sea and you were about to drown, but God picks you up and he turns you around and he placed your feet on solid ground. Maybe you've been in a relationship where you gave and you gave and they took and they took. Maybe you have been swallowed up by this thing called discomfort and disappointment and disrespect and you feel like you're choking. And it wasn't so much that you didn't talk to God. It wasn't so much you didn't cry out to God. You opened your mouth, but nothing came out. Even when we can't speak to God, can I tell you that God not only uh, sees our tears, but God hears our moans, and God hears our sighs. Because we serve a God that just does not hear prayers. We serve a God today that answers prayer. And I came by here today to reassure you this morning that God hears your prayers, even the silent ones. Not only does he hear them, but he may appropriate God will answer them. No matter how down you are emotionally, no matter the circumstance or the challenge, when nothing and no one else can help, God's love can lift you up of whatever you're going through in life. And listen, contextually today, I've got to give you some of the Bible if, if I want Pastor Don to invite me back. In the Old Testament, when a woman couldn't get pregnant, she was considered to be cursed by God. She was sometimes ostracized and pushed out there all by herself, and she was discarded by the community, family, friends, and even sometimes her husband. Listen, I want to challenge you today to go back to the beginning of chapter 1 in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and read in the beginning because it tells you without a doubt that this man had not one wife, but the Bible says he had two wives. I didn't say that. It's in the book. Amen, somebody? I want to tell you today, listen, this lady was in a tough place. And the men at the time, they were uh, they were given the, the, the room in the, in the, in to stretch to be able to marry another lady if their wife could not bear a child. And I got to tell you, I want to tell my brothers today, don't listen to this and think you can go out there and get you a second wife. I want to tell you, God's design for the world is for one man and one woman to be together. Amen, somebody? And I want you to know today, not only is God all-powerful, but God is omniscient. 
That means that God knows everything. And God has the recipe for all the troubles in the world. Elkanah was Hannah's husband, and because she was unable to bear children, as was their custom back then, he had the right to go get another wife. His second wife's name was Penina, and Penina uh, had children, and she would tease, and she would taunt, and she would torment Hannah about the fact that Hannah was not able to bear a child. She taunted Hannah to the point where Hannah ended up in tears and wouldn't even eat. Can I tell you simply today that Penina was a bully? Can I tell you that bullying is never the answer? Penina uh, reached out uh, out of place to want to hurt uh, and cause Hannah some pain. And even though uh, she was blessed with children, she was still second in her husband's heart. And that hurt. Somebody say that hurt. that hurt. Listen, if you're taking notes today, the first point I want to give you is this. Faith that works. I want to tell you today, as a child of God, if you don't have faith in God, God cannot work. The, the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. Elk and I love Hannah and would try to comfort her, but when there is something in your heart that you can't have, just lean over to your neighbor and say, that hurts. That hurts. There is no amount of comfort that will make something better when you got a pain in your heart that only the almighty God can reach. When God's people are without strength, when God's people are without resources or hope or even human support, we have a God that will stretch down from heaven and place his hand right in our situation. And as a matter of fact, Penina may have been so vengeful, uh, vengeful towards Hannah because, watch this, Hannah wasn't the second wife, Hannah was the first wife. And instead of striking, we get some lessons from Hannah though, because instead of striking back at Penina, Hannah went to the one that she knew that could make her uh, feel a whole lot better. And I don't have to tell you this, but listen, sometimes when you have given your heart to the deacon and you've given your life to Christ, you've got to learn how not to fight your way, but you've got to learn how to fight the Lord's way. Somebody say the Lord's way. Sometimes you've got to learn how to fall down on your knees and say, Jesus, help me, please. Sometimes you got to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Sometimes you got to say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Not mama, not my daddy, but it's me. Oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And hand she went to the one that could comfort her. She went to the one that could change her predicament. She knew and trusted the God of Israel. So she called on the one that could meet her in her suffering. Hannah called on the name of the Lord. And I just got to challenge all of you here today. When is the last time that you didn't call mama, you didn't call auntie, you didn't call the pastor, you didn't call the deacon, but you called on the name of the Lord. We always want to shout when God is blessing us, but when we got to go through the storm and go through the tough time, Hannah shows us that we still are obligated to worship the Almighty God. It's one thing you have to deal with something in private, 
But can I tell y'all, Hannah was on front street. She was in public. She was on third and pole while the world was watching. Elkanah was a man that was stuck in the middle of two different women. Penina was blessed with children, but because she did not have first place in her husband's heart, she was disrespectful and arrogant. Hannah, on the other hand, while she had while she had the love of her husband, her barrenness made her depressed and discontent. Can I tell you, I know we always like to say that I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I know we always want to say everything is all right. But sometimes you've got to be able to come through those doors and say, you know what? I'm not in a good space today. I know you see me here, but that's all it is. I'm just here. I need the Lord to speak to me. I need the Lord to fill me up. I need the Lord to meet me right where I am. Come on, somebody say amen. Listen, this is what the Bible says, saints. It was a custom to make a yearly trip to Shiloh to present their sacrifice to God to atone for their sins. Elkanah being the good leader, the good father, and the faithful servant he was, the Bible says he took his whole family on this trip. He couldn't fix what was going on with his family, but listen, at least he was trying. Can I tell my brothers here today that's under the sound of my voice and those that may hear me on Facebook today, can I tell my brothers today that we got to learn how to stand up for our families. We got to learn how to protect our lives and protect our children. It is not always going to be with a $50 bill. It's not always going to be with a brand new pair of tennis shoes. Sometimes you got to take your children, you got to take your grandchildren, you got to take your nieces and your nephews, and you got to put them in the face of the Almighty God. Well, if I had time to work right there, I'm telling you, I would go all the way from baby to field for talking about what men need to do for their families. In other words, family and friends, don't allow division. Don't allow division to discredit or break your family devotion. Did you all catch that? Don't let family turmoil. Don't let the devil, don't allow, allow the enemy to get in and tear up your home. Sometimes you gotta ask yourself the question, do I wanna be right or do I wanna do right? Those are two separate questions. And sometimes as the children of God, sometimes we are stuck because we wanna be right. Somebody say we gotta learn how to do right. We gotta learn how to do right. Don't allow disagreements and fallouts and arguments to cause division in your family. Don't allow those divisions to stop you. Watch this from your devotions with God and your accountability to God and your local church. In other words, I want to tell you, you gotta keep coming to church even when you don't want to. In other words, you gotta keep on lifting holy hands even when you don't want to. When you don't feel like saying hallelujah, which is the highest praise, you gotta do it even when you don't want to. When you don't wanna pay your tithes and offering, you gotta do it even though you don't want to. Although you fall out with the sister on the right side of the church, you still got to come to church even if you don't want to. Sometimes, as Christians, we need support.
corner. Sometimes you need to be in a room with individuals that know how not to gossip, but you need to be in a room with some Christians that know how to get a prayer through. Sometimes you just need a break from the battle so God can refresh you. That's why Hebrews 10.25 says that we should not forsake our tales from the city as is the manner of so. If I was at uh, Second Union, I would tell them this way. Just as a fish cannot survive out of water, a Christian cannot survive without a church home. Every Christian, every man, woman, boy, and girl that has accepted Jesus needs a place where they can grow and mature in the Lord. In Nero, Pergamo, I mean Silo, the Bible says was the place of worship. In Nero, Pergamo, can I ask you to go ask you a question? Where do you go when you get in a tough space in life? Do you decide I'm not going to church until I get myself together? Do you decide I'm not going to go to church until somebody helps me get out of this situation? I want to encourage you today that whatever you go through in life, make sure you go through it with the almighty God. And the Bible says that they worshiped. But I like this today, Pastor Hampton, because not only... It makes me think they was Baptist because not only did they worship, but the Bible says they had a meal together. And listen, if you know about church like I know about church, we going to have some food at church. Hey man, somebody, I remember as a little boy, we, we didn't always get two pieces of chicken, some string beans, and a dinner roll. Sometimes they just said, go into the fellowship hall and get you some of that red juice and some of that yellow lemon cake. And matter of fact, uh, a uh, uh, lemon jello cake, amen, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And after they worshiped, they ate together to demonstrate his love for Hannah despite her inability to bear children. Elkanah would give her the best portion of meat as a peace offering. And after the meal, Hannah did not eat she got up, and the Bible says she got up and she went to pray. Sometimes you just got to know how to get up and excuse yourself from the table so you know how to get to the place where God and only God can meet you. A place where you can talk to him and, and say thank you to him. A place where you can cry out and bless his holy name. And the Bible says that Hannah, she goes to church not to sell chicken dinners, not to see who had on the biggest church hat, but the Bible says that Hannah goes to church to pray. Hannah was in that space where she needed nobody but the almighty God. And I'm so glad today I grew up in church where we sang a song that says, call him up and call him up and tell him what you want. Eli was the Eli in order to go to the altar and pray. And scripture says that she was in deep anguish and she was crying bitterly. Deep anguish. Church, she was in agony. She was heartbroken that she had no children. Imagine that ugly cry where you don't care who's looking at you. You are overwhelmed by pain and sorrow and grief. You got tears on one side and snap going down the other. But you don't care because you know that God is meeting you and that God is going to speak into your situation. This is where Hannah was. Have you ever been there before? And I feel my grandmother sneaking up on me because she used to say, son, just keep on living. You'll understand it better by and by. No one was going to get in Hannah's way. She was determined to, to get to God 
because she wanted to know God what she was, uh, she wanted to let God know what she was going through. And if you have your Bibles open, I want you to look at verse 11 because in verse 11, Hannah wails out her prayer. Hannah was tired. She was sick and tired and tired of being sick. And in verse 11, she not only just says a prayer, but she says a specific prayer. This is the way we should be with God. Penina was blessed to be able to have children, but was so focused on what she didn't have from her husband, she wanted to cause chaos in Hannah's life. She failed to show compassion for Hannah in her grief. Hannah prayed to the Lord. Hannah called on the name of the Lord not one time, but in chapter one, Hannah calls on the name of the Lord seven times, which shows us today that it was complete and there was going to be a new beginning. She identified who she was praying to and what she was praying for. But now let's look at what she's praying about. Listen to what she says. She says, God, remember me and not forget your servant. And now she drills down to what is truly what she wants. She says, but will you give your servant not a child, but when you give your servant a male child. Once again, she says your servant, she re reiterates that there is no confusion about the male child she is asking for. To have a son at this time was a double blessing because at this time in the culture, women could not receive an inheritance. Inheritance at that time went only to males. But then Hannah says something that may seem, seem strange in the Bible to you because she says, Then I will set before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. In other words, Hannah was saying, Lord, if you bless me with this male child, I'm going to give him back to you so he can serve you all the days of his life. Listen, I told you uh, this morning, um, Emmanuel Pearl gave that uh, our first point was a faith that works. But my second point today is you got to stay consistent in chaos. Hannah stays comfortable even though the enemy is busy. She says, my God is bigger than my problems. Even when things may look crazy, can I tell you that today in the church, that long suffering is still a part of the equation for us as Christians. Hannah prayed the same prayer even though God was silent. The Bible says Eli was watching. Eli was watching her. He saw her lips moving, but he didn't see, uh, see or hear nothing coming out. He couldn't hear her prayer, so guess what he did? He assumed that she had bought a bottle, a half pint or something, and, and, and thought that she was drunk. Tormented, uh, tormented by Penina, now she's being ridiculed by the priest who was supposed to be ministering to her and not scolding her. And he says to her, Eli says to her, you must come here drunk. Throw away your wine. He made an assumption and he reacted harshly. Can I tell you today as Christians, we got to be careful how we respond. I know you want to give them a piece of your mind. I know you want to tell them all. I know you want to act like Peter and cuss them out. But you got to be careful how you respond. Can I tell you where Hannah was on this day? That this was a perfect recipe for church hurt. Can I tell you, you may have been hurt on your job. You may have been hurt by your friends. But can I tell you today that there is no hurt like church hurt. 
Let the church say amen. amen. Listen, she was already in distress. She was already upset about not being able to have children. Hannah was being bullied. Hannah came into the tabernacle crying. Hannah is praying to God sincerely. Hannah is accused by the preacher of being drunk. Hannah had the right to tell how mean the, the preacher was to her, how he jumped to a conclusion and wasn't even speaking the truth. And as a matter of fact, she just could have cussed him out. She could have got angry with the preacher. She could have got angry with God and never prayed again. But she didn't. She set the record straight right there on the spot. When somebody treats you unfairly and makes false accusations about you, you got to learn how to take a breath and do what Hannah did. I hope you're keeping your Bible open because in verse 15, Hannah says, oh no, sir, she replied, I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Verse 16 says, don't think that I'm, I'm a wicked woman for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. She didn't hang on to it. She didn't let it fester and build up on the inside. She didn't allow her feelings to get in the way. Let me say that again. She didn't allow her feelings to get in the way. She didn't allow air to get her blessing. And can I tell you that too many times we get so caught up in trying to, to defend what was uh, done wrong to us, when we should be saying, Lord, what is it that you want me to learn from this situation? A lot of times we can't move past it because we're so much in it. Can somebody say amen? Eli couldn't hear her prayer, but can I tell you that God heard her prayer. God heard her anxious cry. Did you notice she didn't tell Eli what she prayed for? Just that she was praying out of anguish and sorrow. Eli backs off of his assumption and listen to what the preacher says. The preacher says, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked for him. Hannah says, oh, thank you, sir. Now she goes back and has dinner with her husband. Not only that, guess what? Hannah was no longer sad. Listen, my last point I'm going to give you, and I'm going to give you the bottles you put the meat on it when you get home. Point number three says, you can't renege when God grants your prayer. Let me say this one more time. You can't renege when God grants your prayer. Now, anything, had anything changed in her situation? Everybody say no. She was pregnant. Penina was uh, still had children. It was still getting on Hannah's last nerve. Her husband still loved her and probably was thinking, what could he do? to cheer her up. When she returned, she returned with hope, she returned with expectation, and she returned knowing that God heard her silent prayer. Can I tell you today, Emmanuel Pearl Gate, that no matter what you go through in life, you got to learn how to keep on having hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I tell you today, Emmanuel Pearl Gate, not only do you got to know how to have hope, but you got to know how to have expectation that God may not answer your prayer when you want him to. But somebody here can testify today that he's always right on time. You got to know that God is God's will and God always will. Can somebody say amen? Can you pray even when nothing has changed your situation? When God doesn't give you no more money, when God doesn't give you no more faith, when God doesn't give you no more food step, can you still stand up and be silent and see the salvation of God in your life? Can you shout until 
thinking until you got yourself together to grant you the salvation he wants you to have. Can I can look back over my own life today, Sister Erica, and I can tell you out the shadow of a doubt that all I can do is tell the Lord, thank you, because he's always shown up every single time that I needed him. I may not have been praying uh, to God give me a child, but listen, can I tell you there have been times in, when I, in my life when I needed a friend and God showed up. Can I tell you in my life there's been a time when I didn't have enough money in my pocket, but God showed up. Can I tell you there's a time when I put my head in between my legs and I was ready to wave the white flag, but God showed up. Sometimes, say, you've got to learn how to push. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to learn how to persevere and push until something happens. For those of you that said, look, i got to get myself together first. Can I remind you today that you'll never get there? But God loves you way too much to leave you where you're sitting. God bless Hannah with the son. If you go to the end portion of chapter one, you'll see that God did bless Hannah with a son. And Hannah kept her vow to give her son back to God. She kept her promise. And because of that, we know about the prophet Samuel. But that wasn't her only child because if you do more digging and studying, you'll find out that Hannah not only didn't have one child, but the Bible says she goes on to have seven more children. And I tell you today that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that God has destined and prepared in each one of our lives. Jesus left heaven to be born of a woman. Jesus put his immortality into a mortal body. He came to show us to live a life that is holy and blameless to his holy name. He came down to demonstrate obedience to God, the Father that sits up high. He came to teach us how to praise and bless his holy name. He came to provide salvation for every single one of our souls. He came to take the strength for our healing. He came to give us life in life more abundantly. He came to free us from the penalty of sin. He came to set us free and now, yes, we are free indeed. And can I tell you, there's no act of service, there's no good deed that we can pay Jesus back. Because you know that Jesus went up down God this hill. He stood up on the hill. They raised him up on the cross. He put his head in the lock of his shoulders. They put him in a ball tomb. But somebody knows bright early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand. And so today email on Pearl Gate, I want to encourage you that whatever you go through in life, wherever you are in life, that just as God heard Hannah's prayer, I want to encourage you today that God listens to you. Just turn to your neighbor and say, God listens to you. Come on, turn to your other neighbor and say, God listens to you. Amen. Most gracious heaven, Father, we come down, God, saying thank you. This is the day you have made. We ought to be glad and rejoice in it. And God, we didn't come here for no form of fashion. We didn't come here to play no games. But God, we came here to get in contact with you. And so, God, it's not me but it's my brother and my sister that stands in the need of prayer. And so today, God, we extend the great invitation of the church. There may be somebody here that never accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. We want you to know today without a shadow of a doubt that if you take one step for Jesus, that Jesus will take billions of steps for you. 
Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Don's not here. The guest pastor is here preaching. I'm here to remind you today, uh, Hebrews 10.25 says, don't forsake yourself from the assembly. What God is simply saying today, church, no matter what you go through, don't stop going to church. Because not only do you need God, you need people. I don't know nobody in this world that can live in this world all by themselves. Sooner or later in life, you're going to need some help. And if you're not there yet, just keep on living. Life will teach you some stuff. And maybe you're here today struggling about your eternal salvation. 1 John 1 and 5 says, this is the record that we may know we've obtained eternal salvation. In other words, you may have a okay? What kind of God would we worship, serve, and love that would snatch us out of darkness, place us in the marvelous light to only lose us again? Is there one here today? Man, boy, woman, or girl. Let them come. Is there one? God bless you. Put your hands together. And give God to Say God answers prayers. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I know that for sure myself because I was in prison with life. And I prayed that God would bring me home and he did. Amen. Yes. There's a bunch of us in here that experienced the miracle of prayer, the miracle of the prayer, and God answered our prayers. Amen. 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 I uh <laughs> yeah, praise God. So at this time, if you guys please stand with me. We want to thank the pastor for the word. Amen. 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 And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Hence now forever to do his will. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.